No idea what's happening in this position. It's okay, we don't need to know because we have somebody that plays chess now better than us. Grandmaster Abhimanyu Mishra, only 12 years old. He has won his game and before we got into that game, let us figure out how he thinks of this position. Let's test him out. Yeah, Thank you, Alejandro, yes. <laughs> that's a very, it seems like it's a very strange position with the king on g5. I mean, yeah, it's like very double-edged. I'm not sure exactly what's going on. Yeah. Well, your game was uh, not double-edged, but much more of a strategical affair. Take us through that one. Yeah, so like in the opening, he played this very interesting queen c2 idea. So the main point of this queen c2 is that you, can, you keep the flexibility of knight c3 or knight bd2. And then I had this play of knight bd7 with b6, bishop b7. The idea of this is eventually some c5. And yeah, here knight bd2 is one of the moves, but I think knight c3 is a bit more testing. Because the reason is, there are some lines like in this in <coughs> in, in a semi slab where White goes for this the same setup with like with the knight on c3, but he goes for like bishop. The bishop is already on e2, and later he develop he develops it to d3. Mm -hmm. So here, if you put the knight on c3, it's it's it's, a, it's a better active. version because yeah, the bishop can go to d3 in one move. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he played this knight this knight bd2 setup. I I took on c4, went c5, and this is like a. Also, maybe in some lines with the knight on c3, whenever you play c5, yeah, maybe c5, he you can go d5. d5. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. this, is, this is a quite fine position for black, and it's fighting position exactly what I wanted. So he played queen b3, which queen b3 was a bit interesting, but I'm not exactly sure on what it was doing, because generally in hanging pawn structure, white is trying to attack on the king side. Like instead of queen b3, I think knight e5 is a bit more accurate, with the idea of like if knight takes c5, d takes c5, you can win h7. And otherwise, there's some, some f4 ideas. But I don't think it's, like, it's still fine for black, but I think this is more this is a better try for white. He played queen b3, which I don't think is really a good move. I, played, I just kept developing with queen c7. And now the next few moves, it was a bit difficult for both sides to come up with a plan. I just like, I brought my bishop to g7, which prevents d5 like once and for all. Well, that looks like a very crafty plan. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and he played this bishop a2 move, which is a bit, I'm not sure like on what he was doing because d5, it, w it still would not work with the bishop on a2. In, in fact, it kind of makes it worse because every time I take on d5, it, it, a2 it will, will also hang. It just felt like in the last few moves, you were going the right direction. You were improving your position while he was creating more weaknesses for himself. Yeah. Bishop c6, bishop c3, I played a5. The idea is because, I mean, with bishop c3, I guess white would maybe potentially want to play a5 mm -hmm. against a move like, say, queen b7. And yeah, queen b7, a5, he gets to trade off this weak a4 pawn, and yeah, it's around equal. And instead of like, in, when I played bishop c6, the main idea is I want to play queen b7, and d5 did not work because of knight c5 first, because after knight c5, it was just winning for black, because you win this d5 pawn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so bishop c3, and now I played a5 to prevent this a5 push. And here he played rook v1, which, I think he completely missed my next move, which was knight d5. Right. We were mentioning this in commentary. This is such a nice strategical accomplishment for you to break out of the third rank. Yeah, because uh, c takes d5, bishop takes d5, I just win a pawn. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he played bishop a1, knight b4. Instead of knight b4, knight f4 also looked quite promising, but I thought that since I played a5, b6 is it's a bit of weakness. Even though my knight on d7 is protecting it, I wanted to let my knight go free and like some e5 ideas now are possible. Right. And therefore, I put my knight on b4. And he played rook bc1 because after knight b4, I have another threat, which was, say, knight takes a2. So say he makes a random move like, say, king h1. There's knight takes a2, queen takes a2, bishop takes f3. And now if knight takes f3, c4 is going to hang. And you, can, you do not want to play g takes f3. Right. So yeah, he played this uh, after knight b4, he played rook c1. And now I decided that all of white's pieces are not looking great at, as such. But if you give white another move, I guess he'll play bishop b1 with the idea of playing bishop c3 because bishop c3 directly, there's knight d3. And once bishop b1 happens, bishop comes d4 and yeah, like black's position is still more preferable, but it's not so, it's not such a big advantage. Definitely, but you broke just uh, yeah, time broke the time of the b5. And knight takes e5 and yeah, bishop takes e5. Yeah, and it seemed like after the complications, especially here after rook e1, white's position was, just fell apart. It's not enough activity. Yeah, and this bishop on v1, it's better than on a2, but even here, yeah. it's just staring to my pawn on g6, and there are a lot of variations where I was getting trapped. Right, and queen d7 was one of the ways we were looking at for you to cash in. This must have been your choice, and a smooth sailing Yeah, and I felt there. like this queen e8 move was a bit more, was a, like, a very accurate move, just preventing any counterplay on b6. 
Like, I think Queen E6 is also probably winning mm -hmm. with the ending, but I just didn't want to give him any chance with my isolated pawns. No, this seems absolutely accurate. And a new, a nice smooth sailing here. You move to winning two in a row. How's it feel uh, to be playing here? How's your performance feel here so far? Yeah, it feels great to win two, two games in a row. Like after my start and my, I played a not a great game against Ali Mirandi. And yeah, that game was, uh, it, like it was very difficult for me because I mean, he sacked these two pawns in the opening with this preparation and I could not react well and lost. And yeah, it feels amazing to win two in a row in this very strong tournament. Absolutely. Abi Manu, always a pleasure to have you here in the studio. Always a pleasure to see you doing well and good luck in the rest of your games. Thank you, Christian. Absolutely, a lot of pressure on this young man. Future of chess in America. No, not that big of a deal, right?